So in this equation, we have Na2CO3 plus Al2SO4-3, sodium carbonate plus aluminum sulfate. This is a double displacement reaction. The sodium is going to change places with the aluminum. So on the product side, now the sodium is not with the carbonate, it's with the sulfate. And the aluminum, that's not with the sulfate, the aluminum is with the carbonate. Double displacement. So we can use a trick to make this a lot easier. This is kind of intimidating looking. Let's try it. We have two sodium atoms, and here's the trick. CO3, the carbonate, we have it here, and then we have it again over here. It stays together in the chemical reaction. We can just count it as one thing. We have one carbonate, two aluminums, and then the sulfate again. Here's the sulfate, here's the sulfate. We have three of the sulfate ions, so three there. On the product side, two sodiums, three carbonates, two aluminums, and one of the sulfates. So you see, that's a lot easier to count those up. Probably a lot more accurate too. You end up making fewer errors. So to balance it, we could start with the carbonates. We have one here and three here. So I could put a three as my coefficient in front of the sodium carbonate. I have two times three. That'll give me six sodium atoms, but the one carbonate times the three. So now I have three carbonates. Those are balanced. Let's see, we could fix the sodium pretty easily. That might even fix the sulfate. If we put a three in front of the sodium sulfate, two times three, that gives us six. One sulfate times three, three sulfates, and we're done. This equation is balanced. So you can see by counting these polyatomic ions as just one thing, if they appear on both sides of the equation, it makes it a lot easier to balance double displacement reactions. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for sodium carbonate plus aluminum sulfate. Thanks for watching.